In this tutorial, we're going to take the stand and walk animations that we created in the past tutorials and we're going to apply them to an actual scene in a game and then script the animations using code. So let's go ahead and close this. Now we're back to our scene here. We have no animation um, in, the, in the game. So what we can do is go over here and create a new game object. We'll go to game object, create empty. And let's just rename this to night. reset it. So now we have nothing here. If we go over to our Smooth Moves plugin, the Smooth Moves runtime, there's a bone animation there at the bottom. Just drag that over. And you see the only property here that we can change is the animation data, which is what we've been working on with the knights. So we'll go ahead and attach that. So now we have a knight with the data. Now we can either update this by going to game object, game object, update all Smooth Moves bone animations, which will immediately create the mesh, or we can just play it and it will do that too. So now we have a mesh created, uh, an object created. If we go over here to our night object, we'll see an inspector. We have original script. It created an animation object with two animations, the stand and the walk, from our data. It's set to play automatically. You can turn that off if you want, and it will keep that setting. It also created a skin mesh render and it attached three materials, uh, knight, weapons, and knight. We're only actually using two materials, the knight and weapons, but because of the ordering, we have the arm, then the weapon, and then hand, and then other knight on top of that. It has to alternate, so it has to do the knight first, then it draws the weapon, then it draws the knight again. So that will give you three draw calls total. If we had included the sword in the original, or in the atlas with the knight, we'd get one draw call, so that's something to consider when you're trying to optimize, uh, especially for mobile devices. Now the quality is set to one bone, that's because each quad in the mesh is modified by one bone, so there's no reason to have that any higher. And then you see it just those shows the three materials. So that will persist, but keep in mind if you make changes um, to any of this, to your um, structure here, it'll get wiped out every time you hit play or make a change to the night animation. So it's not good to attach objects directly to this because they will get wiped out. Um, you can add them programmatically to the transforms uh, at runtime if you need to attach them to bones. Now if you look over here, it actually created a bone structure. So you have the knight, then you have the root, we have the bounce, um, bounce bone, and then all the bones attached to the bounce bone. And you'll notice that each bone actually has a, another bone on top of it attached to it. So the arm left has an arm left sprite. That's so that we can scale the sprite independently and the ch children of that bone won't scale with it. Um, that's just something that will allow us to use animation curves on the scale uh, without affecting the rest of the mesh. So you see it, it creates a whole hierarchy here. And again, don't try to add things directly to this at design time because it will get wiped out if there's any changes. Again, you can just create an object here and then at script at runtime you can make your script attached to the bone that you need to attach to if that's necessary. Okay, so now we have the night object created, the night mesh. We hit play. You can see in our scene the night goes into the breathe animation, I mean sorry, the stain animation which he just stands there breathing which is exactly as what we want it to do since uh, stand is the default animation. Now what we're going to do here is script this so, so that we can alternate between standing and walking. So let's create a new script by C sharp. Let's call this night. And let's go ahead and open this in mono develop. So we have our night script. First thing we need to do actually is use our smooth moves library. That'll just help us in referencing these objects. It'll be a little bit faster. We'll make a public variable bone animation and we'll call it night. In the update we're going to check for input and then modify that uh, bone, bone animation object, the night, uh, based on the input. So let's check for input.
And what we're doing here is we're checking for the right arrow to be pressed, and if it is, then we're going to crossfade into the walk animation. Now this bone animation actually creates a, an animated mesh or a skin mesh just like any other object or any other skin mesh that you use from uh, Maya, Blender, any other 3D program. So all the functions are going to be identical to that. So you don't have to change your workflow from what you're used to. You can do exactly the same thing. Uh, just like if you imported an FBX file from another program, you would do a crossfade. Uh, same thing. So we'll go ahead and compile this. Go back to our game. And we want to go to our knight object. Or we could attach it to any object just as long as we attach this knight to our, our logic code. But I'm going to put it on the knight just because it makes sense. So we'll go to component, scripts, knight. And that adds the knight script over here. But we have to attach our bone animation. So now the knight's ready to go. So if we hit play, and we hit the right arrow key, we can see he walks forward. But he doesn't stop. So what we need to do, go back to our code. Crossfade to stand when we release the right arrow key. So let's save this. Go back. If we hit our right arrow key, he walks and we release, he goes back to stand. You can see it's crossfading, so it's smooth, it doesn't just abruptly halt. So if we just kind of tap the right key, you can see how it's just kind of crossfading there. If we hold it down, he walks. Now he's not actually moving, that's the code we'd have to add in, but uh, he's doing the animations. Let's go ahead and stop this. If we go back, let's do the same thing for the left key, arrow key. But now, what we want to do, since we're hitting the left arrow key, I want him to walk backwards. We could also rotate the, the game object so that he's facing the other direction. Uh, but in this example, I'm going to actually make him walk backwards. But to do that, we actually have to tell it when he's going forward we want the walk animation speed to be 1 and when he's going backwards we want the walk animation speed to be negative 1 so it'll play in reverse let's go ahead and save this and go back play so if we go forward he walks forward go back, he walks backwards. And he crossfades between them. And that's pretty much it.